Hi everybody, it's me Luana and in this video I'm going to share with you the process of creating the hand painted textures using the 3D coat texture. I hope you like it, so let's go! As you can see I imported my low poly model inside of 3D coat. I'm using the 4K resolution because I want to paint like a lot of details in this model. So I like to paint with the max of resolution that my computer can render. And then in the future, um, if I need like to downsize it, I can do it, but I still have the original file with the resolution that I painted. So here I imported the textures, the base color that I painted inside of Substance Painter and I will use it as the namesake has a base color so it's good for you if you don't have like a painting background so you can like start to painting on top of something so not like a blank canvas so I will start here as you can see I'm adjusting the symmetry and sometimes you see in the video that I have another model floating on top of this one but this is because the model is not symmetrical so I can try to adjust the symmetry manually but to have a precise symmetric symmetry here i decided to duplicate the model and put on top or on bottom on anywhere in this vertical line so just to adjust the symmetry after it you can like just hide this model and because it will not like affect your painting but i didn't hide it so sometimes you see it floating but don't need to worry about it and <laughs> this is not an easter egg or something like that so here you see that I started to add more like shadow, more skin tones and like make my character more like alive because the colors like these base colors that I painted on substance was just a base so they are very flat and because in PBR workflow you like you have the other maps to help you to create the volume but on the hand painted process you need to like rely only on your albedo so this is why I need to paint these volumes um, I started to paint like then because my character is like have a lot of elements of the owl I did the nose like a beak because I think that it's cute <laughs> and um, this is one of the elements that I decided to add to this model to like make you like remember of an owl but it's not like literally one owl just a girl of like um, a society of like wizards or something like that so I thought like I think that's important for you when you create a character to like to create in your mind a background like a story for you to follow and to help you to create your decisions so this is what I will do here like I created this background that this girl is like in a, in a society that she lives in like a school or a library or something like that has an apprentice and he's like after studying many many years she's like in you know spartans that you have this quest that you need to complete so <laughs> she goes for her quest to prove that she is like she worth her, her position in this society so he goes to that quest by herself alone and this is why uh, I chose like the the owl because this is a a element a animal that represents a lot of wisdom and I want like to have the society that they are like um, you know they keep the knowledge of the world in the society like a big big a huge library and this is the place that she grew up and this is the background that will help me to decide the colors and some design aspects like for example 
when I started to paint the cloth and I decided the cloth colors, I decided for the gold and this tur turkeys, like this bluish green color, because it remembers me like wisdom and you know like royalty, and this is why I chose this one because it's not like she's living in the countryside in a small village and she lives like with animals in the camp, not like that. She is in a very like. Um, in a society that they have a lot of like structure and they have a lot of like um this is not something like primal so this gold and the style of the clothes are telling this i hope <laughs> i hope so when i designed this character by picking the colors and by picking the design of the costumes and her hairstyle all of that it's important because you don't know the story behind it so i need to show you the max that i can using the image the character that i have so when you are making the concept of a character and this is what the concept artist does um so Simply by using the shapes or picking the co the right colors, you can tell the personality and the background of the character. So this is very important because here, this is what I'm studying because I worked many, many years like creating the, um, the characters that other concept artists did the concept. So I want to create my own. So... This is good because after working with a lot of like great concept artists, great like artists in general, you will start to learn from them and observing and creating from their concept. You start to learn because you need to have a lot of observation to deliver like a good result. So um, this is something that naturally you start to learn because while you are working so um, at least this is what i think because you don't need like to it's important sometimes you need like to stop and study instead but after starting to work you will learn in your daily basis like just interacting and working in a team with your colleagues in the project so just by doing that in a project, you see that you start to evolve. So the main like uh, tip here is like to don't stay like many, many times just doing the same thing over and over again. Like you stay like five years doing the same thing every day not questioning and not trying to learn more and to improve your your process and just by doing what they told you to do so if you do that you will not learn you'll be stuck in the same position forever because you just learned how to do that uh, that job and you don't like um, are evolving to have like uh, biggest role in the team so i think that it's important if you want to work especially like i work with games so if you want to work with games too i think that it's important for you to be like uh, know other areas and talk to your colleagues like with the effects artists with the concept artists with your art directions with the sound designers because they will teach you a lot and to be a good like artist in the game industry you don't need like to be just a good artist because there is many 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 technic technical things that you need to learn that just by yourself will be very difficult so it's important to have people by your side because usually the things that you need to learn are the things that they do every day in their work so just by observing and talk to them you'll learn a lot i'm not saying that that you need to be close to people because you want to learn something not that it's most because because 
uh, it's good to have a good relationship with the team and by keeping like learning every day this will make you a better a better artist and when you work with games you kind of stop to being just an artist you need to become a game developer and this is what makes the artist good because sometimes you, you are not the best artist in the world but you are the best artist for the project because you know so much about the technical specifications about what the games needs maybe the games doesn't need the best artist in the world because the art don't fit the game style but they need you because you know exactly what this project needs so this is something that i wanted to share while i'm painting so <laughs> returning come back coming back to the painting process because i think that i'm like kind of making a lot of philosophy here so um, here um i return to the skin i'm painting some details in here some shading you see that i go back and forth a lot of times i will paint a bit of the face and then i go to another part like i will paint a bit of the hair and then i go to the clothes and i like to evolve the whole model together because if you paint all the face and finishes the face and don't have the other parts uh, when you start to paint like the other parts of the model you see that it's not matching and you need to fix it so it's good for you to like paint a bit one part and then go and paint another one and here in this model it's a bit easier because i already have the basic colors but if I don't, usually the first thing that I do is by uh, I start by creating a layer like just with the base colors, just one layer with skin and I make like just one solid color skin and hair, a layer with the brown hair and the eyelashes and another with the red scarf and another one with the green parts of the cloth and another one with the gold so i create like one layer by each material or color and i start to paint it with all that information because for me i can't like start to paint like the face if all the rest of the model is in gray for example this will not work so um, here it's a bit easier <laughs> as i said because i already have as i said because i already have this base color information but sometimes you'll not have the time for doing that or maybe you need like to if you have the time because a lot of people like are faster in substance painters so it's good to have it because you can use like this like your ID colors, your ID maps to select the, the space or um, but you don't have the time for your substance you do it like manually creating layers <laughs> for you with each color in here and one thing that I think that is like good to mention about Trudy Coats is that he have a very good like uh, interaction with Photoshop so for me it's like um, a 3D Photoshop that I can like always jump to my uh, Photoshop that the 2D one because by pressing Ctrl P I can like jump there and I adjust the things that I want and then I come back so it's very like fast for me to work in here so um, I really like to painting here sometimes something that I often like lesson people asking why I don't do my hand paint textures using the substance because in here the way that I paint is more like um, for me it looks more like Photoshop and I don't need to create many many masks and the workflow is more like painting 
like not just adding some material and adjusting masks with the highlights and the shadows and using the maps to make like the color color gradients for me so here I created manually by painting like Photoshop so this is why I use this one and many many other hand painted characters hand painted environment artists use 3d code for doing the hand painted textures um, maybe there is another new software that is has good has 3d code but i didn't work with it yet so this is the one that i use and i know that's very used in the industry for this kind of art so that's it um, let's let's talk now about the as you can see there is a lot of times that I zoom out the model and I start to rotate I'm doing that because I'm observing the model because I want to see the whole picture of it because sometimes you just zoom in and starts like to paint it like crazy and spend so much time just one area and you forget about all the rest of the model so it's important to remember always that there is more than just one part or one side here as you can see i decided to separate it the gold part of the rest because I think that will be easier for me because I can use this layer as a mask so I select this layer and by control clicking on it so I can like mask to just paint in the golden area and this will help me a lot because I don't need like to be careful all the time that I'm painting the gold because I just selected this material and I can like uh, tweak the color easily if I have it like separated in just one layer so here I started like to add some occlusions because this is very very important because a lot of like painters don't care a lot about these like contact shadows and I think that this is very very important to have it because this made the model don't feel like so flat and I have like a, I dedicated a long time for it in my models so this is something that will make your model much much more like feel, feeling like final not just like you select a color and just feel the feel the layer with it so you see that I'm painting the gold and after doing all these highlights and this gradient of colors I would decide I'd like to make some adjustments on Photoshop and this is the process going back and forth and I go to the Photoshop adjust something and I come back in here and you see that my painting is not like I'm not like being so careful and oh my god itchy like um brush like every time that i touch the 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 model i'm like calculating no i'm going like <laughs> sometimes it's like in this part for example i'm like making some messy but it's okay it's okay it's not calculated because here i just want to see the values and the colors and after it i will return and i will refine the model so as i said you need to evolve the model as a, a whole and by not like feeling afraid of painting of like i don't know sometimes we are so afraid of like making bad decisions that we go so but so like slow and the models takes like an eternity to evolve for something so but i like my that my workflow is more like about feeling i feel that in some area need more color 
more saturation in another one don't need it and I go by painting and if I don't like it I will go there and paint it again and I'm not afraid because this is a project that is by my, for myself so I'm their director so I need to test stuff in here and make decisions so I will not like um, making good decisions if I don't test stuff and if I take like an eternity to test things or if I'm afraid to like uh, ruin my process by painting something and then I don't like it and painting again I will not make good decisions it's totally fine because I like to say that in here using using 3d coat or photoshop you don't need to worry about like ruin your canvas ruin your paper because you are putting a lot of like layers of of tint on it so you can paint and repaint many many times that you want so i'm testing the colors and if i don't like i just change it and i paint it again and again till i have the result that i want so not being afraid of ruin stuff it's very important because makes you more like like a free child to test and learn stuff and this is very important um, I, I learned that by painting with gouache because when I was painting with gouache on paper I needed to be very careful because the paper they have like a amount of color that you can put on it so if you like uh, put a lot of a lot of like tints on it ink on it you see that the paper will start like to looks terrible but on photoshop and other medias digital medias you don't have this problem and this will help you to know that everything that you're doing here you can control z or you can recover like it's not it's not like final like in the traditional media so let's use it in our favor and don't think about like like if you paint something that you don't like you like um, throw all this time that you spent on it on the garbage that you just like ruin it like oh my my day I just ruined my day because I painted this material all day and it don't looks good and i will need to paint it again no no you learn something and you do it again and in the next time will be better so there is not that okay you don't need like to uh, after painting something that you don't like you don't need like to throw it in the garbage and start again you can just redo the part that you don't like it because we are in the digital media so let's use it in our favor okay this is an advice that I can give to you. <laughs> this one is free. <laughs> the next one I will, I will charge for it. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Um, I worked in some projects that the, um, the artists need to uh, implement the models inside of the game by using Git. And Git is a tool that they use like for Usually developers are used to, uh, and if you are a artist that work with games, probably you need to use this one too because they will create a copy of the project just for yourself. So in this copy, you can test the materials and test everything without ruining the version that the developers are working on. So everything that you do in your Git, in your branch, that's your copy of the project. Is something that will not affect the final game so you can like broke a lot of stuff and and it's reversible so that's good that's good because you can test a lot of stuff in there and each person can create a own like cop of the project and test this stuff and if they like this and they approve this this can go for the final version of the game and if don't if you, they don't okay this will be something that will not like affect everything so this is the same in here I think because you can make your changes and test this stuff and if you don't like it you can like adjust it like by saving like 
all the adjustments may, that I do, I create a cup of the layer and I paint on it. If I like it, I keep this layer. If I don't, I delete this layer and that's it. And I save like many, many versions. I needed to cut this video many times because I was saving the, the project. So it takes some time like to go there and save and the software to process all this. But so there is a lot of times that I cut because I'm saving. So I have many, many versions and it's mainly because I don't like to work with many layers. As you can see, I have just these layers for working. It's not that much. So if I don't, if I will not have so many layers for me to return and to adjust and to recover my work, I think that's good for me to have a lot of versions. So if I don't like something and I already deleted or merged with something, I can return one version and like just have the, the things that I lost. So for me, it's a way for like having the, <laughs> the changes and being safe of changing stuff here. Um, as you can see, I'm testing like some kinds of fabric here and if I like it or not, like Oh, I tested if this kind of fabric looks good because there is a lot of like um, clothes and even furniture that have this kind of, of material, like couches and stuff. So I think that would be nice to try to have a different material, but I decide not to. <laughs> and that's okay. I, at least I tried. I tried and I saw that mm, I think no, 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 it will be very noisy and I will try something else and then this one I like it and I move it with this one and that's it I'm just like testing stuff the same way that I did with the other the other parts of the model that I was testing like um, testing if I like the the kind of like lamp if I like the hair what design should I pick so here I'm doing the same with the colors and with the fabric the materials so this is totally like fine especially because i don't have a final design yet so i'm creating the design while i'm doing it so i don't have a concept that i need to follow exactly like one by one so if i don't have it i need to do it like i need to make the decision so i will test everything that i i'm doubt about because I want to make the right decisions for my model. So this is the way that I think. And <laughs> yeah, I know that, that I should make this decision on the, on the concept stage, but uh, for my defense, I didn't have so many time for doing that. So I needed to move fast for the model because um, I had like a date for me to finish and i almost didn't <laughs> i almost didn't in time for a presentation that i was planning to do and but i i did it because if i spend like all the time just adjusting stuff in the concept maybe i would not have the time enough for doing the model especially because i'm like i'm not an expert in creating concept i'm just like learning by doing it and by creating my own concepts now so a lot of decisions for me was was important to make watch like modeling and seeing the character in 3d like for example when i started like to pose the character i saw that the way that the lamp is this position you know and in this position that the lamp is it's like making the light touch the backpack in the back of my character and the focus of my character is the face. So this is why I, I decided to make the character like holding this lamp because I can make it hold like in front of the face so the light will touch the area that I want the, the person like to look at. I want to make the eyes going for this place and after it, the eye can move to the other parts of the model. So that's it. 
I'm painting the materials. You see that 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 there is a lot of a lot of like questions about how to paint gold, how to paint leather, how to paint each material, skin and other ones. But this is I think that that all of this can be solved by observation. Uh, you are not the first person in the world that will be painting like um, these materials. So you don't need like to create the wheel because the wheel was already like created. So you can just by watching they painting these materials, observing how other people saw that and not just observing art, but observing the material itself like for example i will observe the i will see how the wood is how the trunk of a tree is and after observing that i can paint it i i see the tree and i see how other artists like painted the tree and then i will see how can i paint this tree okay so this is the the way that i approach the materials so, um, I think that that's it. I will paint this model and I will, um, after I have everything like blocked in a result that I think that is almost there, um, I will put this model inside of Marmoset and I will start to see how the texture is working on there because I think that it's important for you to see if the the model is working in the final plates for example if the character is going to be in unity or unreal it's important for you while painting to see if the colors are okay if the materials are okay in this final place in this final software because the people will not see the character inside of 3d coat or inside of substance painter or <laughs> here like in this video they will I imagine because I created this character for being um, a character inside of a game, I imagine that, that it's important to see how it looks like in the final environment. And this is why uh, here I use it as the engine for me to simulate like the real time, a real time place like software. I use it the, the marble set and I will test my character many, many times in there and I will see how the lights are working. Um, while uh, painting, I decided like, mm, I will see how my character is looking like in there. So I will make the correct like adjustments based on that. So that's it. I will keep this video like playing and rolling for you to see and thank you very very much i hope you like it if you have any question please tell me i will make the possible to answer it and thank you very very much for all this journey
I'm back again. Hey, um, thank you very, very much for watching the video. I'm so happy that we are in this journey together. And for me, it's been very nice to watch all the process of creating the model again, because I already see a lot of parts in my pipeline in the process that I could improve. So um, this is something that I really recommend for everybody that, that you don't need to post in anywhere just for you like to see how many time you spend on the model or to see your process to watch what you did and what mistakes you did and the things that you did right. So this is something that I really recommend and I will I will have the another videos about this model. The I have one that I'm creating the rigging, posing, and after posing, I adjust the painting a bit, the texture, and after it, I created a base because I was not happy with just the character. I think that I wanted an environment. <laughs> I, I think, no, I really wanted an environment for this character to, because I want the person to see the mood that I was imagining. And, if it stays just in my mind, people will never guess what I'm thinking, so I need to create it. So I created a base, very, very fast environment. So like one day, so the next videos will be about it. I hope you like it. Please, if you have any question, tell me and see you.